good morning from home today. Today is the official day that I'm going to start our pre-travel prep. If you haven't already seen the short two minute video that at the filming of this release today, um, I'll try to link it down there or up here, but we are officially going to at least Michigan and several other stops on the way there, or there, because they're north of us, and back again. And no, we're not going to Hobbiton. That would be cool, but not this time. <laughs> Hobbiton, we would love to come visit you. But my goal for today is number one, to take you all through my brain process of planning a trip like this. By the way, new glasses came in Friday, picked them up Monday. So yeah, new glasses. They're a little bit bigger. I don't like that, but it was the only ones to get the flex and get the uh, clip-ons for the sunglasses because that was super important to me. So it is what it is. I had to make some compromise and the bigger lenses was the compromise. But today I'm wearing a hoodie because it's March in East Tennessee and it's either 20 degrees or it's 70 degrees and it doesn't know which it's going to be until it's in that moment. So right now it's in the 20s, 30s. So yay. I'm wearing a hoodie because I'm cold. <laughs> also, I just finished off of a uh, frozen berry smoothie. So this is my travel spiral notebook it has rose gold on it i've used it for years and i only use it for travel and then we had to take a that that unexpected break for a couple years so we'll just leave it at that so how do we do this so just starting i feel like i'm saying so a lot you guys sorry how do we do this the way that we start is number one we talk about going and we talk about planning a trip this time the entire trip is planned around a scheduled event that my mother mother-in-law is going to in Michigan. It was a specific day, um, specific time, specific place. She has to be somewhere while we're in Michigan, and I may not may or not even share what that is because that's her privacy. But we have a specific time and place that she has to be while we're in Michigan. So first off, we started with that as our starting point. Other people will start with like school schedules, vacations, things like that. Because we homeschool, we don't have to do that. So for us, it became, this was our starting point, was having a set day to have to be in Michigan. From there, we looked at uh, number one, where to stay. So most of the trip, we are staying with my mother-in-law's brother and sister-in-law. Hi, you guys are amazing. We're gonna be staying on a farm in Michigan and I'm really excited about that because they have a pig and it is the sweetest pig and I love this little thing and I've seen it since, I got to see it when they first got it when it was like a baby pig and now it's a big pig and it's still just, we, we like pigs. So <laughs> we're gonna get to go see the pig. Um, we're gonna be staying at the farm with the pig. But yeah, we're gonna be staying on a farm in Michigan for most of the trip. I'll explain that in the actual vacation videos as we go, because a lot of this also is, like for our privacy, we don't want to talk about too much in advance exactly where we're going, so we're just gonna be sharing it in the videos as we go. But that's kind of the plan. And when I write out things and I show you guys things, I mean, I don't even show you specifically how this all works out. But so there, for, like I said, from there, it was plan uh, the specific day we had to be there. Number two, see about reservations. So since we're not having to pay for a um, place to stay, we are going to do a rental for this because it's going to be an extensive road trip with multiple stops. Now, while our van just got service, new, um, in, new interior air filter, oil change, the brakes were just finished on it, we don't want to risk being on vacation and something happening to our personal vehicle and having to pay for it while we're on vacation. So the goal is where we have a rental scheduled to pick up. And another thing that we do is we never, ever pick up a rental the day we're leaving or drop off a day a rental the day we come back. Why? Because your rental, you check in and check out the exact same time because if you check out later, they charge you for an extra day. Like every rental company we've worked with, they'll charge you for an extra day. 
So it's the exact same time. Well, the only way to pick it up early enough to where we can pack it makes it have to come back early when whenever we drop it off. Also, like we're driving to Michigan from East Tennessee. Usually, every I've driven this trip three times. No, twice. I rode once. Twice since I've been married to Matt. Twice. I have driven, like myself, driven the entire distance. Every time it takes 12 hours to get there and 8 to get back. I have no idea why it works that way, but it takes 12 to get there and 8 to get back. With a 12 hour drive there, I do not want to be picking it up in the afternoon and driving all night. I don't drive all night anymore. I just think that that's a bad idea. If we can avoid it, we do. I did do it once and the next day was so rough. So we ever we said if we ever did it again, like we're the kind of people, we'll get up at 3 a.m. and leave at 4. That's fine. I don't do the whole driving all night thing. So we're gonna be doing it to where we don't have to do that. We're gonna pick it up and then we're gonna leave the next day. And then we're gonna be driving back. And the other thing too about that was allowing ourselves an entire day to get back means that we may or may not be doing some stops that the kids and my mother-in-law don't know about. And we may be adding some trips on the way back. And now we've built in time to be able to do that, which we are we're taking a puppy with us. So regardless of if we actually get to do what Matt and I wanna do, we have to stop because puppy. Like the kids and I and, and the adults, we, we can make it, you know, two to four hours. Puppy can't. So <laughs> we're gonna be doing more frequent stops because of puppy as well. And it's a corgi mix, so it's not that much complication for taking with us. So that was another thing was looking at, we're not leaving the day we pick it up. We are not leave or we are not dropping it off the day we get back. We will be dropping it off the day after we get back. Plus also that allows us to sleep in the next day and then drop it off in the afternoon the next day. So that's kind of how it is. Because we consider the day after vacation part of vacation. It's like the rest day after. And when we didn't do that when we went to Disney, Matt was exhausted the entire next day because we drove from Orlando to Knoxville, Tennessee all in one day with like little to no stops because most of everybody slept the way back. I slept most of the way back. Grandma and Matt drove the way back, which grandma and I drove a lot. No, Matt and I drove a lot of the way there, but I was just, my body was exhausted from all the early mornings and late nights. And I was just like, oh, I'm done. So they were fine driving back. He went back to work the next day after that. And he was like, please, if we ever do, like from that point on, every time we've done travel, we don't do it where we're traveling the whole day. Now there's a couple of times we've had to do like, my dishwasher just finished. There's a couple of times that we've done like half a travel day and then he works the next day. That has worked fine. But for something like this, um, we made sure also there was gonna be at least one full rest day um, before he has to go back to work. There's actually two or three before he has to go back the way that we worked it out. So that was the third thing we did was once, uh, no, fourth. So first was planning around the specific day we're going to be there. The second was uh, planning to be with staying with the family for that week. The third was the rental. And number four, once we had the exact dates of the rental, which we had to move the dates around a little bit, um, the rental, because we took like, we say 40, be flexible with your rental dates if you have flexibility with your vacation, because moving it forward one day for drop off we saved $40 for the first day. So really good. Um, and also obviously look and see what discounts you have and stuff before you do a rental and see what other uh, companies offer discounts or what things that you already have. But once we had all that planned and we had the attentive, or we had the attentive dates, no itinerary yet, attentive dates, then Matt put in his vacation time at work. Then a week later, once his vacation time was approved, which we think it may have been approved sooner than that. It's just they had a really busy week and we, we had a busy week and we just kept forgetting to check. And then finally at the end of the week, it was on the, the app for him to say, yes, you are approved for vacation time for this. Um, so he's going to be taking seven vacation days to make this work. And it's totally worth it. 100% totally worth it. So then from there, I took my phone and I've lost my phone. Oh, it's in, front, it's in front of me. It's in front of me under laundry. I'm folding laundry as I go. And I opened up a notes document. I can't show you. It has dates. I don't want to show you dates. Um, again, privacy. But I opened up a doc. And I started the planning itinerary with 
the day we picked the rental up because I'm sharing this with my mother-in-law and my husband who were all splitting the cost to do this family trip because it's all about the seven of us as a family getting to go. Um, hopefully next year we'll get to do one with grandma too and it'll be the eight of us. We're looking forward to that. Hopefully, hopefully uh, for now we're focusing on this trip. But when I went into the itinerary, I started with the day we're picking the rental up. Then I added in, I, the itinerary ends the day the rental goes back. So that way in our mind, number one, the vacation starts that day. And Matt is taking vacation day the day we pick the rental up. So that way we have a whole day together at home to finalize packing, to check off our checklist of things that have to be done before we go, to go grocery shopping for the food for on the way up, and everything else that we need to do. So that's why I started the itinerary there. And I will show you written out on paper. So what I do is I do have one virtual in my phone, but I find for me personally, I still prefer sometimes just having it on paper because there's times that I'll be watching other YouTube moms on my phone. I'll be watching um, Instagram reels and stuff and I don't have access to my phone, but, or I'll be, I'll have like the kids school stuff up of like their accreditation program. I'll be reading off like quiz questions or things for them to look up. So sometimes I don't always have access to it. That's why I still like having a written one written down. And also like the other day we lost power and internet and the, the uh, data was down because they're putting in fiber optic internet in our area and like we lost everything and it was also like a stormy day and stuff so like it went out and then we had to wait for the storm to pass through before they could get everything back up. So like I lost the data to be able to like really, my phone decided it just went, it went crazy. Like my phone thought it couldn't work anymore without data or Wi-Fi on it. So I was like, you know what? I'd rather have a written one anyways. What the written is gonna allow me to do is where the itinerary on my phone is for all three of us. This written is where I'm gonna start the next important phase for me for planning a vacation, which is there's gonna be one list for the clothes that I'm packing, very, very detailed. And then there's going to be a meal list. It's virtual so I can share it with Matt, but it's also going to be written down. And it's not a meal list for while we're gone. It is a meal list to slowly stock up our stock up freezer so that included in our vacation budget is not the food for when we come back because we are driving back on a Thursday. No, we're driving back on, yeah, a Thursday. We're driving back on a Thursday, which means the next day's Friday. That's our normal shopping day. But instead, I have an entire meal plan written out to where 100% of the food will come from the deep freeze. I prefer fresh fruits and vegetables. Whenever there's weeks like this, I just push for the healthiest frozen, frozen options. So that's something else that I'm going to write out. Um, and yes, we also do have things like dog sitter planned. Hi, Jess, you're amazing, we love you. Um, she's actually coming over this week. And another thing, we oh, I'll talk about that all in another video too, of like dog sitters, do's and don'ts, things like that, which nothing don't towards her. She's amazing, we've used her for many years. She's also a very good friend. Uh, we love her to death. But like, that's a separate video. This one is more for like pre-planning. But let's get to list number one for today is actually pre-packing list. Also, I will go ahead and say for planning purposes that for those of you who watch the reels that we do on Instagram, which we try to do reels on Instagram that are not the same as the shorts on YouTube, and sometimes we'll share like more day-by-day -day stuff on Instagram at like the end of the day. We also still try not to share like our actual location when we're on Instagram. Like sometimes if we do a day trip, I won't post until we get home that night or several days later. But as some of you saw, and not going to go into details yet um during this process of planning this trip we're also applying for passports for the first time so this is the folder that i have been putting everything we need for our not a scheduled scheduled appointments <laughs> to do passports uh not this week next week so like i've been keeping everything travel important documents in here for that purpose and also i'm probably going to print out like our rental confirmation because there's been times I've actually went to a hotel and again sometimes smartphones are not so smart and like my hotel reservation won't pull up and then like maybe their system's having problems too and like at first they can't find it and when I show them the paper and sometimes I'll just show them the paper just flat out be like here it is and sometimes that really helps them and if you do it with a nice attitude they're willing to like work with you 
and just try to help you out and remember they're they're really just to help you they're not really there to make your time miserable so like sometimes i'll put that in there um i will probably put like we have one hotel plan for this trip the hotel confirmation is going to be in here the rental confirmation is going to be in here um insurance documents will be in here normally matt and i carry our insurance documents on our phone i will probably print insurance document documents for this because um if something happens our rent our car insurance does cover up to a certain amount on rentals so i'm probably going to have that in here as well um, photocopies of documentation that I need. I won't take the originals actually with us to Michigan at the moment. Real copies are in here, but we'll take photocopies with us when we go. And we also did that when we went to Disney and they were completely fine with that. Um, cause like they understand that if you're leaving on a boat out of a port, you don't really want to take actual physical copies of like birth certificates with you. So I will have that in here as well i don't photocopy or license because anywhere that wants it they want to actually physically copy it while you are standing there so i don't worry about that but those documents are in here this is again the rose gold spiral planning notebook so i'll just do a little bit on here uh by hand if my wrist strap will cooperate which uh yeah so <laughs> It's, it is what it is. So this is, uh, I'm not going to put a title because I'm trying to look in the camera and write. And the thing won't stay still. I will do a title here in a minute. So like the first thing I do is I put day one. And then I would put what we're going to be doing on day one right here. Now again, I want some of this to be a surprise and some of these videos to be like building up suspense. Because to us, this, is, this trip is a huge deal. I mean, we're applying for passports. So like this trip is a huge deal to us. So I'm not going to put like everything on here on camera for you to see. I'll fill some of this in later. But like day one, I will put on here. I'm going to put, uh, we're picking up rental. It is so weird writing while looking in the camera and not at my actual handwriting. Um, day one, pick up rental. And then under here, I would put like anything else that we need to do for that day. But since this is my clothing list... Of course my camera is going to focus on my thumb and not the words clothing list. Um, I'm just going to put like basic information on here. So day one is pick up rental and then I have some other things we're doing that day. I'm going to fill that in later. So for now I'm going to skip a line. I usually try to at least skip one line between each one so I can fill stuff in later. And then day two is departure day. So day two... departure I usually prefer to do all caps because it makes it easier this is a lot harder than it looks day two departure day and then on here for like an actual written itinerary I would put like right here the actual dates the reason I do it here is because it makes it easier to do right here and then on times when I'm planning a trip out this way and I'm doing a budget, I will put the budget number right here. And then each day I'm going to put how much it is. So like on a pickup rental, I would put how much the rental is for that day. And then usually I'll round up. Like say if the rental's 400, I'll round up to 500 because there's always going to be extra fees you're not expecting. And it's just, just every time we've done a rental, that's just kind of happened. I don't remember if it actually let my mother-in-law book or add the second driver when we booked the rental. So I don't know if like that'll be extra charges once we get there. And I'm pretty sure they don't charge extra for pets under 35 pounds. So, but yeah, so like right there, I would put how much the rental is. Day two departure day. On a budget line item, things I would do there is number one, on a departure day, I put how much gas is estimated to get us from from beginning of that day to the end of that day first line on the item and then the thing next thing on here i would put is breakfast and then put are we eating you know in the vehicle or are we eating out then i would put lunch and usually on travel days lunch will eat out or dinner will eat out and but like i'm probably i don't know yet dinner hopefully will not be eat out it may just be like pick up groceries and we'll eat once we get to the farm but breakfast i'm planning on eating in the van and i may actually do breakfast before we go for my own personal uh health issues right now lunch we'll probably be eating out and then dinner we're hopefully going to be eating uh in michigan where we're staying and then day th like, so, like i said skip a line oh and if anything else we do that day that would also be included and try to get as much in chronological order 
as possible. And there have been times that hand running these out, I will start over just to make sure everything stays in chronological order. But every time I add something, and here is my current 2024 suggestion, emphasis on suggestion. When we are traveling, if we plan on eating out at a quick service, fast food, sit down restaurant, breakfast, we average $10 per person. Lunch, we do 15 to 20 per person, depending on the location. And for dinner, we do 50 per person. So, and also like in that for the 50 per person, we're calculating sit down restaurants. We are also calculating that's going to cover the tip. That's going to cover like if we decide to do like, hey, we're on vacation. Everybody can have ginger ale or hey, look, they have strawberry, raspberry, mango lemonade let's get that or hey we're stopping at chick-fil-a for dinner let's do frosted lemonades for everybody so that's how that calculation goes in then if we've overestimated again that's going to include tip and then that money can roll over to a next day or you know after the trip it can roll over to like picking up some dinner on the way home on the, the day after the trip or something you know that's kind of how it works for us but that's that's our personal numbers is our best guess is if we're staying somewhere where breakfast is not included ten dollars per person for breakfast 15 to 20 for lunch depending on the location that we're going and i'll actually look up places and be like hey how much is wendy's in um kentucky because we're gonna be driving through kentucky how much is a sit-down dinner in michigan so Things like that. We looked those up. But yeah, $10 for breakfast, 15 to 20 for lunch, and 50 for dinner per person. And that helps us do a rough estimate. Which, there was one trip we went to Michigan that we maybe, maybe ate out once. And I think the entire trip, we drove our own personal vehicle. The entire trip for a mm, four or five day trip was three to $500. Because we took most of our own food and planned it that way. This video is getting a little bit longer. So I'm going to try to wrap up. So yeah, this is how it looks so far of day one and day two. Let me take you straight to just the clothing real quick. And then I'll finish filling this out off camera. So here's the walk-in closet Matt and I share. And that's literally the width of the closet. There used to be shelves all the way around. But literally you'd have to turn sideways and could barely squeeze in here to do anything. So we opted that instead of actually having a walk-in closet... We were fine with it this way because I am so minimalistic with my clothes that it doesn't matter. And then um, Matt, most of his shirts hang, whereas most of my shirts fold. So it kind of worked out better that way. So this is where I have already started planning is, ta-da, back here. So this, one of the first things I do is once I start knowing where I'm going is I will actually set clothes aside. Because here's my mindset. I'm either going to be buying brand new clothes and setting them aside or I can take clothes that I already have, not wear them the entire summer until we go, and then um, have them set aside just for that. Because either I'm already using something that I already have and waiting to use it, or I'm buying something and waiting to use it. So my mindset is, go ahead and start laying stuff aside. Yes, it means I won't get to wear it for all of spring, because this is a summer trip, and part of our summer. But it will be set aside for that, and I'm willing to do that. So this is the first one that I have planned out. And I have this uh, place in the wall that I can go boop. And this is the first one that I have planned out. The only thing that this needs is a pair of white capris with it, which I forgot to hang with it. I'll go get those in just a minute. This is a teal tunic dress. It's a little bit longer than just a tunic on me. I'm 5'2", so it's a little bit longer than a tunic for me. And it is, uh, it does have sleeves, but the kids said that it looked really good on me with this like quarter sleeve uh, sweater and it's lightweight. So for summer, which also like in Michigan, their summers for us, we're not as hot as they are. There was la actually last time we went to, um, Mackinac Island, we were wearing hoodies when we first arrived because we were cold. And I was actually sitting here looking at my jewelry to see if I could match something to that. And I may do that dolphin necklace with it because this is going to be more of one of my nicer day outfits. And I want to, camera's going to go fuzzy for a minute. I want to wear, I want to plan out some 
nice day outfit. So that may end up being my church outfit for while we're there. Um, again, we'll talk more about things as we go, but like, I also don't want to spoil too much, but so yeah, like this one's already laid out. All I need to do is put a pair of white Capri leggings with it. And me personally, this is no judgment towards anybody else. I personally am not comfortable in like leggings and a t-shirt. So I'm more like, I lean more towards like tunics or short dresses with leggings in the summer. That's just what I found that I liked. That is my phone going off, so I'll make this quick. So there's one outfit that I laid out. And since we said in the video that one of the places we for sure are going is Mackinac Island. Let's see if they'll both fit there. Yay! This is one of my favorite skirts that Matt bought me. And I don't even know if I actually wore, I don't think I wore this one. I think this is one of the skirts, so sad story time. This is one of the skirts that Matt bought me, I'm pretty sure. After our first cruise, when we were supposed to go on a second cruise to Disney in 2020, and we had the money, we had the time, we were a week away from planning, and everything shut down in 2020. So it was kind of sad, but like it's, it still has that nautical theme to it, and it's super floofy, but it's incredibly lightweight, and I'm willing to wear something floofy that's lightweight, and I know it's like a dress, and I can wear pants now. <laughs> But like, I really like it. I like the nautical theming of it. And I think this will be super comfortable and really pretty to just walk around historic Mackinac Island with. And I mean, also it has this uh, double cold shoulder shirt. And this is the one that's not going to stay on the same hook as this other one. Let me put it on the door right here next to everybody's shoes. This is that shirt I shared in that short video um, where I used the downy wrinkle release. Yes, it gets wrinkled even in my closet, but the downy wrinkle release is amazing with this shirt because whenever I, I always pack it because yeah, it looks wrinkled right now because it's been shoved in the back of a closet. But like when I actually like hang it up the day I want to use it and use the downy wrinkle release, um, it actually will unwrinkle even though my camera will not default. But yeah, these wrinkles actually will come out with downy wrinkle release and then it looks smooth and pretty and that's one of the reasons why I love packing this shirt is it looks wrinkled now, but it won't be later. So yeah, that's the first two outfits that I have laid out. And then from there, I'm just going to go on my itinerary and say, this is what we're doing this day. This is what we're doing this day. And again, because we're going to Upper Peninsula, Michigan in summer and it's cooler there than it is for our summer. Another thing that I prioritized was, okay, look at the climate, look at the places we're going. Like we went to Disney, we planned a ton of lightweight outfits because it was going to be way hotter than we were used to. Well, with Michigan, it's way colder than we're used to. So we're going to be packing hoodies. So we're going to make sure we have room in our uh, travel backpacks for like a hoodie to take with us to put on whenever we need to. And I'm going to have like not the super lightweight hoodies, like our travel fall and spring hoodies. So that's basically it for our tips for just like starting the pre-planning process and just getting going with planning uh, trips. It doesn't have to be like super scary, super complicated. Start with like, again, just the minimal points of like, what is the main goal for this trip? When can I do it? How can I get away? What transportation am I taking? And place to stay. And then from there, you can do the fun part. Once you get all the hard stuff done, then you can plan all the cute outfits for the trip. And you can even help your kids pick uh, cute outfits and stuff. But I have mostly teens now. They mostly pick their own clothes. But that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.